Hey y'all, I wanted to make a video showing you uh, my latest project. As you can see right here, I have a little pattern on the screen. This is a 16 by 16 uh, LED grid, and I have two pots for my inputs, and then I just have my power supply. Now, what I've made here is an electronic etchy sketch where I have one pot which moves it uh, vertically and one pot which moves horizontally. And you can see that's just a little pattern I made for you guys to show what you could do. So let me reset it. So I could see. You have a cursor that's on, and then moving this pot is up and down. And then this potentiometer is left and right. And as you can tell on the screen, uh, there's one brighter LED, and that's your uh, cursor. So you always know where you're at. I was between two spots, so it oscillates a little bit. But as you can see, you could pretty much... Uh, draw things like on a normal edgy sketch. Now there's no microprocessor or any uh, software or any of this. This is all done using hardcore logic and I'll go over that in a second. So as you see this is my input, just my two potentiometers and those go into two ADCs. These are 8-bit ADCs but I'm only using uh, 4 bits each because I have a 16 uh, rows and 16 columns and to represent 16 you only need 4 bits. I have those two going into uh, two data selectors and these are two of one data selectors and the reason I'm doing this is because these pods are only used when you write data and then the other selection out of these selectors is the address when it's reading and I'll explain why I did it that way in a second here and next to that I have a uh, flip-flop which determines the read or write mode so the way this works is it goes through all of them reading all the addresses and then writing the appropriate bit to the screen and it has a write mode where it takes the address of the potentiometers and then writes that bit and that's the bit that cursor is on so it reads all of them changes the flip-flop writes that bit changes the flip-flop reads all of them and then so on and so forth so i have a flip-flop determined the read write mode i have one five 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 here which i'm using as a clock and i think this one's running at uh, 15 kilohertz and then i have another clock up here this one's running at around 220 or so kilohertz the reason i have two clocks is because my counters are here i have two cascaded uh four bit counters and this will count up to 256 and reset and the reason i did it this way is if i were to use one clock it would read as long as it writes so for 50 percent of the time it would be reading and 50% of the time it would be writing. And there would be a big brightness difference between the cursor and the rest. And because it didn't want that, when it's reading, it's using a slow, the slower clock. And it's when it's writing, it uses the fast clock. So it writes for a small period of time. And that's what causes this brightness difference is the ratio between reading and writing. And because I'm only writing about 10% of the time and reading 90% of the time, it's just a little bit brighter. And so you can see a difference, but it's not too drastically bright. So after my counters I have a static RAM chip here and this is uh, 1024 bits by one bit. So there's 1024 addresses and there's one bit per address and the way I'm doing this is I have my uh, ADCs. Four bits here, four bits there which gives me eight bits. So I'm only using eight bits to address out of the 10 that's in there. So I'm only using 256 memory locations out of the 1024. So using these uh, same components, I could actually make the display double. So instead of 16 by 16, I could do 32 by 32. And the only thing I would need is two more uh, decoders. And that's what these big guys here. These guys are binary to one of 16 decoders. So the address of the ADCs so my ADCs, the address, goes in there during the write mode. And once in the read mode, it goes through the address of the counter. So it goes to address 1, displays it on the screen, goes to address 2, puts that address in the static RAM. The static RAM data goes into the data line of the decoders. And the address that goes into static RAM is the same address on these, which is the address out here. So uh, the counter goes to address 0. That's this one, pulls the data out of the static RAM, goes to the decoders, and it goes to this bit. So if there was a 1 written in static RAM, it'd be on. If there was 0, it'd be off. And it goes through the entire count. So as the counters count, it goes to the next one, reads it out of static RAM, goes through the decoders, displays it on the screen, so on and so forth. So it's 
and so it's iterating through every single LED, reading through the RAM, and writing the appropriate uh, data. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Up here I have a couple of op amps, and all I'm using these for is voltage level converters. The decoders, I'm running at a higher voltage than the rest of the circuitry. The rest of the circuitry runs off of 5 volts, and when I run the screen off of 5 volts, it becomes quite a bit dimmer. So what I had to do is run the decoders at a higher voltage so I could get more brightness. But to do that, all the inputs have to be at that same voltage that it's running at, which in this case happens to be 15 volts. Otherwise, you get a bunch of weird data and it doesn't really work. So that's all I'm using these app amps for is comparators to convert my 0 to 5 volt logic on the address lines and the data line into 0 to 12 volt uh, signals which these chips want when you run them at uh, higher voltages. Well 0 to VCC whatever the ha voltage happens to be at. And I have my regular up there. So that's pretty much my project. Uh, not really drawing anything now but as you can see it works great and you could expand it quite easily if you uh, understand how this works you could make this pretty much as big as you want with the same circuitry with just two more one of 16 decoders you could expand this to be 32 by 32 and if you want to expand it more then you'd have to get a bigger static RAM which you can there's a bunch available and so on and so forth so you could expand this pretty much to whatever size you want however complex you want these ADCs are 8 bits so you could expand it to well, quite a large number actually a number of pixels so that's my project to show you real quick the back of the screen. As you can see, that was no fun soldering. I spent a good four or five hours <laughs> soldering this grid all done by hand. It'd be easier if I would have pre-bought the some matrices. They sell eight by eights and 16 by 16 matrices, but I didn't have the time nor the money to buy those. So that would have been an easier way. What I do want to do, however, is I want to expand this into a bigger version and also I want to make it multicolored, kind of turn it into something like <laughs> MS Paint where you have where you, with two pots you can move your cursor left and right, up and down, and then it would be a third pot to choose your colors. So if I were to use RGB LEDs, then I would get the three primary colors, red, green, blue. I would get the secondary colors, uh, orange, violet, and yellow. And I could also get them um, to be completely off and white if they're all on. So with using three bits, so if I use three of these static RAMs, I could get up to eight different color combinations, pretty much. And then so that you'd be able to go around the screen, choose your color, go around the screen, change the color, whatever. And you'd actually be able to draw <laughs> with a three bit color on the screen. You'd also be able to turn it off so you could e erase what you were doing. So that's the next project I want to do. But those uh, RGB LED matrices are <laughs> quite expensive. So if anybody wants to donate money, for that project, I'll go ahead and accept that. But uh, yeah, so this is what I've been working on. Hope you like it. See you next time.